All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown. All three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing... The Trials of Empire by Richard Swan. This is book number three in his Empire of the Wolf series. Um, I think it's a trilogy. I don't know if this is the end of the things. Uh, he did leave it open for sequels, I believe. Now let's talk about the uh, cover first. Because you know I love graphic design and cover illustration. This cover is great, as are the other covers in the series. All three covers done by an artist named Martina Fakova, and as we can see, <clears throat> we'll hold them all up, you know, book one, Justice of Kings. If you want to watch my review of Justice of Kings, just type in Justice of Kings into your YouTube search bar, followed by my last name, Durfee, and that review will magically appear upon your screen. And so then uh, book number two here is uh, Tyranny of Faith, so they look good together. I also did review book number two. If you want to watch that review, follow the same instructions for book number one, except a very, you know, type in a different, you know what I'm saying. Book number three. They all look good together, and then when you put them together on the shelf, they look like they all belong in the same series, so good for Orbit Books for matching up all the books so they look nice on our bookshelf. We'll set those up here, and carry on with book number three. So there is a map in here. It's a really cool map. In fact, if you followed my other two reviews of this series, it was the map that sold me on the book. I just really enjoyed the way that uh, Richard Swan had named all of the cities and mountain ranges and rivers on the map. I just Sometimes that's all it takes, folks. Sometimes it's just simple things like that. Get the map right, I'll get your fantasy book. Okay, so um, opening, it starts out... Uh, there's a delightful prologue about uh, justice and non-justice where the characters sort of banter back and forth about what is just and what is not just. I really enjoyed it. It was only a couple of pages long. Then we go right into the main story. Uh, it is a first-person story told by Helena, um, as were the other two. They were both told by Helena. She is, let's just give you a background on her, she is a young lady very young lady, well, in her tw maybe early 20s, maybe 20 exactly. Anyway, she is apprenticed to um, the king, the, the, the um, Emperor's Justice. Now, the Emperor's Justice is a man named Conrad Von Vald. Now, Conrad Von Vald is simply an investigator in the law enforcement agency that rules this fantasy world, as it were. Um, so he goes around and uh, for the king, uh, the emperor, and as the emperor's justice, he goes from town to town and figures out murder mysteries. He solves different problems for different people. Helena is his young apprentice. He plucked her up out of like a, from an orphan situation in the other books, and so that's now they're together. Now in the other two books, they had a task man with them named Brissinger, who was sort of like the comic relief, sort of the wisecracking person of the trio. Is he or is he not in the first part of the book? I don't want to spoil anything or what goes on with him, but we do have um, two new people that are joining this group of, of that are joining Von Vault, Brissinger, and um, Helena, and that is uh, we get Sir Radomir and we get Lady Von Osterlin. These people are much more kind of like grim, and then they, they're not that humorous. They're not like Brissinger anyway. But anyway, we open up with uh, the uh, prologue on the little on, on justice, so they're discussing justice. And then um, we get right into some witchcraft, some exorcism. Um, the deal that they're investigating involves, you know, pagan ritual pathways to the realm of the dead. I mean, they're exploring some weird stuff in this one. You know, Von Vault has some magical powers of his own. He's got a voice kind of like Obi-Wan Kenobi that can, you know, you, you, 
these are not the droids you're looking for. He can kind of do that to people a little bit. Um, and so now, but, but then there's other darker magic involved, both with Von Vault and some of the other characters. And you just, in the beginning of the book, you're like, what the f*** is going on? Because it's not necessarily kind of like the other two books. It's, it's, it's going in a real more, way more magical and supernatural direction than the first two books ever went. Um, now, um, what's going on overall? What's the overall plot without giving away spoilers? So the Emperor, Empire of the Wolf is crumbling. And Von Vault and Helena and their crew are part of this. To save this Empire of the Wolf, Von Vault and Helena must um, look beyond the borders of the land for help. So they they you know they look towards the Wolfmen of the southern of the uh, southern plains, and then they look towards the pagan um, clans of the north. They need to galvanize a force against the evil zealot Claver because um, Claver wields some mysterious demonic powers of his own, and um, if Von Vault and Helena are to uh, stand against this guy Claver, they must um, ally with the Wolf Clan, the Pagan Clans, and then they also need to ally with both sides of the mortal realm. They must seek out the dead. Dun, dun, dun. They must journey into the afterlife. What does that all mean? I'm not going to explain any of it. You're going to have to just read the book to find out the mysteries of all that. Um, but it's good. It's it's an adventure. It's kind of like uh, more high stakes than the first two. Like the first two were like, let's solve this murder over in this town. And then it was another thing over here. And now, now it's almost like they're trying to win against the Dark Lord, against Sauron. Now it's kind of like, now it's kind of like all bubbling into there's a dark lord that's going to uh, enslave everybody in the underworld or in the demonic realm, and we've got to stop this. So the stakes are a lot higher in this book. Um, I in, The first book was one of the... If you follow my channel, you know it was one of the best. I think it was, it was one of my top ten books I read in 2022. Um... And it's, it's on my list of top 100 fantasy novels of all time. I thought that uh, book number two was, uh, was g just as good. Um, and then this one, it's kind of like, it's, it's, I would rank it third in the list. I mean, one is my favorite, two is my second favorite, three is my... So I'm going to give this one a solid like nine out of ten stars. Um, just a great, great trilogy overall. If it's a trilogy, like I said, there's, I think there's room... For more books with these characters in the series and i won't tell you if all the characters have lived or not but you can still i mean you can still do some great stories in this universe and let's hope that we get them because it's one of my favorite um fantasy series that's come out in the last you know 10 years or so that's pretty high praise you know so there you go with um empire of the, uh, what did we, uh, Trials of the Empire.